There are classic motorcycles out there that are rare. The American Roadsters made by Crocker that are now worth close to a million dollars. The Vincent Black Lightning worth over a million dollars. But there's one motorcycle so rare and so mysterious, it's difficult to even put a number on what it could be worth. This is the 1916 American motorcycle known as the Traub. I think you can probably guess why. Now before I get into this amazing story, I want to give a big shout out to the Wheels Through Time Museum. I'll be mentioning them quite a bit throughout the video, but the thing you need to know is that's the amazing motorcycle museum in Maggie Valley, North Carolina, housing the largest American motorcycle collection in the world, including this incredible motorcycle we're talking about today. And they've helped me out a ton with this video, providing footage and old photographs and really piecing together this amazing mystery. Definitely go check out the link in the description to their channel. They make amazing videos about American motorcycles and also check out the link to their raffle bike this year Which is I believe a 37 knucklehead. This video isn't sponsored by them or anything I'm just a big fan of their work I have been for a long time and I'm really glad that they were so open to me making this video and being so willing to help with it Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the story it all starts way back in 1967 in a typical suburban Chicago home with your typical hero, a plumber. Now the repairs must have been significant because a wall was partially removed and lo and behold a secret room was discovered containing a motorcycle. Sort of the ultimate barn find. Now this bike was old, even for 1967, but they didn't know how old. The style was of the early motorcycles from the teens, but the name Traub was entirely unknown. This would have all been much simpler if Harley Davidson or Indian was there on the tank. Who or what was Traub? So the hunt was on to figure out why this motorcycle was hidden here. The former owners of the home were tracked down and they claimed that the motorcycle had gotten to that spot from rather nefarious events. Not surprising, you know, you don't normally hide vehicles in secret rooms for no reason. Apparently their son had actually stolen and hidden the motorcycle not only from the original owner, but the creator of this motorcycle, I guess whoever this Traub was. His parents found out that he'd stolen the bike and they dealt him his punishment, which was to enlist in the army. World War I hit and the son was ultimately killed in battle. Apparently unbeknownst to the parents, he had hidden the motorcycle before he left and the secret was lost only with him. Now here's where the story actually takes a turn because that was the story, that was the narrative for a very long time. But most of what I just told you about the discovery of this bike and this whole story about a stolen motorcycle lost because someone went off to war, yeah, that story is almost entirely false. In fact, all we can really say from this early discovery of this bike is that a wall was indeed being demoed in some form. You know, the entire building might have been demoed. And along the way, this motorcycle was discovered hidden behind a brick wall. Now the reason I say that all of this may not be true is because more has been discovered specifically in the past 15 years or so about the history of this bike. Now little was known about the Traub for a very long time besides the supposed thieving son story. But over the years as ownership has passed through a few different hands including Bud Eakins and now the wonderful Wheels Through Time Museum, its origins and history have been sort of unveiled through long, arduous research mainly from the museum but also just exposure to the masses. Shortly after its discovery the bike was traded to a large motorcycle dealer in Chicago for a brand new motorcycle motorcycle, either a Yamaha or a Suzuki. And that dealer owned the motorcycle for about 15 or so years until the bike was sold to Bud Eakins through their relationship with Steve McQueen at the time. Throughout its history, various owners have ridden and ran the bike, but ultimately Dale Waxler, the founder of the Great Wheels Through Time Museum, purchased the bike and not only preserved it, but actually got it running again and went through the engine. Dale was one of the first people to really dig in and actually do some real mechanical work on the bike. And after the Wheels Through Time Museum acquired it, they were able to start to track down more information on the motorcycle's origins, and especially Matt, Dale's son, who now runs the museum, was able to find some really interesting stuff. So we now know that the original creator of this motorcycle was named Richard Traub, a man who actually lived on the same street that it was discovered and probably on the same property well into the 50s. So that building where plumbers found it, that was Traub's house. And we have a record from the early 1900s showing a Richard Traub living in a house with the same street name but a different house number. Dale would always say that Chicago just probably changed their house numbers at some point and he just assumed it was the same house and it actually turned out that he was correct in the end 
Traub's house and the house where the bike was discovered hidden behind a brick wall, that was one and the same regardless of that early discrepancy because of the way that Chicago changed their house numbers. So Traub's hand-built motorcycle was sitting there in his house behind a brick wall the entire time. Richard Traub was listed as an experimental machinist on a draft notice from this time, plus he had a brother who worked for Thor Motorcycles, so it makes sense that he could have been involved in something like this, and various documentation shows that he was building the early concepts for this motorcycle all the way back before 1910. A certain Richard Traub writes into the Motorcycle Illustrated in 1907 talking about his own hand-built big V-twin motorcycle that he designed and created over the course of a year, basically on nights and weekends. Dear Sir, enclosed find one dollar for which send me the Motorcycle Illustrated beginning with June issue. Also find enclosed picture and specifications of a motorcycle made by myself throughout engine and all. I worked on this cycle about one year, putting in the time only between 7 p.m. and 11 p.m. I also worked Sundays. This motorcycle has no wonderful qualities, but will run as good as any four horsepower motorcycle I know of. He then gives specifications for the bike, all of which, besides the power output, match the Traub that we have now. Now, it's important to know that this motorcycle he's talking about is a definite prototype to the one that we now have. It's not the exact same motorcycle because we know the current motorcycle is faster than that. Also, this is 1907, not 1916. So this is a solid decade before the motorcycle that we now have was produced, but Traub was clearly perfecting the machine and updating it. In another later correspondence with the Motorcycle Illustrated, we find Traub asking a question regarding oil circulation. He says, kindly inform me if magneto ignition is practical for twin motorcycle with a bore of three and a half and a stroke of four inches, geared at three to one, also stayed away to prevent the rear cylinder of a twin getting too much oil, which is a classic problem in old American big twins. Now, the Motorcycle Illustrated recommended what we would basically now call a baffle plate be inserted into the cylinder, and sure enough, the Traub that is now housed at the museum has this distinctive baffle plate right there in the cylinder. More info was also uncovered when this photograph was discovered for sale on eBay, a group of motorcyclists from around 1910 hanging out in front of a one Richard Traub motorcycle shop, General Repairs, and one of these bikes is more than likely Traub's early prototypes. After some serious investigation, the guys over at Wheels Through Time have now narrowed down this location to the same location as the house where it was discovered. So Richard Traub's shop was a small, just like wood shed, basically, out back from his house on the same property. Now, what makes this motorcycle so special and valuable isn't mainly the fact that it was a one-of-a-kind hand-built motorcycle, though that is cool for sure. But, you know, if I built a motorcycle myself right now, just sort of a basic one-off motorcycle and a hundred years from now it was discovered, they would look at it and be like, wow, that's pretty cool. But, you know, kind of sucks compared to the production motorcycles from my time. We just couldn't. The Traub was different. It was an incredibly advanced motorcycle for its time, significantly more advanced than the production bikes coming out of, for example, Harley and Indian and really any production motorcycle in the world. A 76 cubic inch, just massive big V-twin for the time, over 1200 cc's, a twin cam engine, 80 years ahead of Harley in that regard. Indian didn't make an engine of this configuration, a big side valve twin cam twin, until the 50s. It's an entirely unique hand-built engine unlike anything in history, hand-built unique three-speed transmission, a low-mounted engine within what's called a keystone frame, a unique front end, an unbelievably sporty machine for this era, much more, as Matt Walksler told me, sort of like a sporting motorcycle that you would see almost decades later. This bike has a compression release, much like the big twins from later manufacturers like Vincent with their 1000cc twins. You know, you're turning over such a big engine, you have to have that to start this bike. When you look at other American motorcycles from about 1916, and even motorcycles from across the pond, think Norton and Triumph, this bike has a robustness to it. It really feels like this was sort of a grand tourer before there were grand tourers. It's got a big gas tank, 
a high top speed of about 80 miles per hour, that three speed gearbox. If you look at the absolute fastest production motorcycles in the world from the late teens, you see similar numbers. I mean, the iconic and rare Cyclone V-Twin really was the fastest bike from this time with a top speed of 85 miles per hour. And then a few years later, Excelsior V-Twin hitting about 80. The very fastest, most expensive production motorcycles available sold at high prices at that time were right on par with the Traub. But as far as we know, this was built by one man. But then you look at the big manufacturers like Harley and Indian and Triumph, none of them had a motorcycle even close to as powerful or as advanced as this. But it's great because there's also so many signs that were used by Dale Wachsler to originally date this bike to about 1916 or 1915 or 1970. So, you know, 1916, but give or take about a year. This bike really does stand out from other motorcycles from its time. Almost like, you know, a Ducati Superleggera. Imagine that limited edition motorcycle was lost to history for some reason for like a hundred years. We could figure out pretty easily what time period it was built just by looking at it, but we'd see all sorts of crazy features and innovations that really make it stand out. Except in this case, it was a single guy building his own Superleggera. Just crazy stuff. The greatest mystery of all, though, without a doubt, is the fact that Traub more than likely hid his own final masterpiece, the motorcycle that we now see at the Wheels Through Time Museum, behind a secret wall and never got it out again before his death. This has always been the most confusing and mysterious part for me, so when I had the chance to talk with Matt about, you know, the video I was working on and this whole topic, I had to ask him why he thinks that the bike was left there, and his answer was really fascinating. So you remember the story about a guy going off to war and leaving the motorcycle hidden behind the wall? Well, the origins of that myth may contain more truth than we realize. See, one of the key pieces of evidence regarding Traub and who he was and where he lived is the draft registration that we saw earlier showing that a certain Richard Traub labeled himself self-employed and an experimental machinist. And that draft registration was marked as coming from Manhattan. So at this point, he was not in Chicago anymore, and he was getting ready to go off to war. See, someone did go off to war, leaving the bike hidden in a secret room, but it wasn't some thief. It was Traub himself, and he never died at war. Traub came back and lived at that home all the way through the 50s. So Matt's theory is that something changed for him. Maybe it was the effects of war. We know that people come back from war changed, and it's possible he just wasn't the same person, or at the very least, he'd lost interest in building his own motorcycle. Like that project bike that you keep saying you're going to get to that just sits in your garage. The bike stayed there behind the wall, originally hidden because it was his passion project and he didn't want anybody to find it while he was off at war, but he never got it back out again. He just left it there until the discovery well after his death in 1967. In spite of all the mystery, in spite of the fact that our knowledge is pretty limited, for me, from what we know about him and what we know about the bike, Richard Traub goes down among the great motorcycle builders of all time. And I'm not talking about custom builders. I mean the few incredible minds throughout motorcycle history brilliant enough to build their own motorcycle from scratch. You know, think people like John Britton with the Britton 1000 and Michael Sizz with his incredible electric race bike, except one of the big differences in this case is we really have no evidence that he had some big team and had millions and millions of dollars invested into it. It kind of just seems like he was just doing all of it. <laughs> the story makes you wonder though, could there be other barn finds as rare as this out there somewhere, just waiting for someone to discover them? Maybe one of Traub's other early prototypes is out there somewhere. Now that would be a good find. One of the great things that I've learned from watching the Wheels Through Time videos is that the real value of a motorcycle isn't so much how rare it is or how big the price tag is. It's the story behind the motorcycle, whether it's, you know, some special built race bike unlike anything else in existence or, you know, a guy who built his own airplane and used a Harley engine to power it. Dale Wachsler, the founder of the museum, happens to be one of the classic motorcycle enthusiasts to really start to focus on the originality of motorcycles and seeing that is actually more valuable than complete restorations. You know, just leaving the motorcycle alone, preserving the bike, letting the bike with all of its 
blemishes and scars tell its own story. Sure, it's cool to see an incredibly old motorcycle all shiny like it just rode off of the dealer floor from a long time gone by, but that's like taking your grandpa in and trying to get rid of all of his scars and wrinkles. Those scars and wrinkles tell a story, and that is lost when you meticulously restore a bike. In the case of the Traub story, though we do know so much more than ever before, the heart of the story of this guy in Chicago somehow building and machining a motorcycle on par with the best of its time, that story is still primarily a mystery. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see this motorcycle in person, again, go check out the Wheels Through Time Museum in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. I've got links to everything that you need to know about the museum in the description below, along with links to their YouTube channel, and again, the 2022 raffle bike that you guys can go uh, support them by signing up for. Thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.